It's Antioch Live on your radio at WBGX 1570 AM and online at gospel1570.com, amvcchicago.org, and Facebook Live. Featuring our lead pastor, the Reverend Dr. Gerald M. Dew, and our digital pastor, Reverend Terrell Carter. Good morning and welcome to another edition of Antioch Live. We are so grateful that God has orchestrated for us to spend this time together. It is July, it is a brand new month, and you know on every first Sunday we celebrate and honor the Lord through communion. So get your elements ready and be prepared to do that after today's message. Let's start this broadcast with prayer. Father, we love you, we thank you, we honor you for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace towards us. God, we thank you for keeping us and giving us your favor. God, we pray that you would use these few moments to bless those who are watching. Bless someone through this broadcast. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. We have a very special guest this morning. Brother Gerald Moore is going to lead us in worship. And so if the Lord's been good to you, if you know you are blessed, get up, clap your hands, participate in worship with us as we honor the Lord for, for his goodness towards us. And after that, we're going to be blessed by the word of God from our lead pastor here at Antioch, the Reverend Dr. Gerald M. Dew. Let's go to worship. We are blessed. We are blessed. Yes, sir. We are blessed. We are blessed. Help me say it. We are blessed. I said we are. morning and welcome to another edition of Antioch Live. Thank God for our digital pastor, Reverend Terrell Carter. We certainly appreciate you. And I want to say thank you to Reverend Lawrence Walker, who shared the word on last Sunday, we are one. Uh, let's give a shout out to Reverend Lawrence Walker, our youth pastor. He's doing a great job. As a matter of fact, he hosts a Zoom meeting uh, with our youth ministry every Sunday afternoon. And what a blessing it is to have those young people engage with him and engaging with the word on a weekly basis. God bless you, Reverend Walker. We certainly pray uh, that each of you had a wonderful, wonderful Juneteenth celebration as uh, our nation and especially African-Americans celebrated uh, the news that uh, slavery had come to an end. And uh, we certainly appreciate all that God is doing in the lives of uh, African-Americans. The Black Lives Matter movement is critical, vital and important for us to pray for and to participate in as best we can. Please remember uh, to take the 2020 census. Please remember, if you really want your voice heard, vote November 3rd. 
And so make sure that you're registered to vote. Uh, if you need to apply for an absentee ballot, if you need to apply for a mail-in ballot, begin doing that process now. Amen. And uh, we hope to be able uh, to help persons in terms of transportation to and from the polls on voting day if that is necessary. And so we just thank God uh, that our membership is engaged and involved, praying with and for one another. Our Sunday school classes are going forward. Our ministries are having meetings. We're doing prayer calls and wellness checks throughout the week. And Antioch is alive and well. And let me just thank all of our faithful and dedicated contributors, those of you that have been tithing and giving your offerings online, in the mail, dropping it off, having it picked up. Thank you so much. But I want to encourage others that may not have given since we've stopped gathering. Please, as best you can, support this ministry as we continue to bring the word of God uh, to you and to the world. Amen. Amen. Listen, it's preaching time. It's preaching time on this first Sunday in July. And I want to call your attention to Psalm number 46. Psalm number 46, verses 1 through 7. Psalm 46, 1 through 7. The text says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, will not we fear, though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea? Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, there is a river, the streams whereof make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. Here it is. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Amen. Thus ends the reading of God's holy word. I want to talk about shelter in God. Shelter in God. I've been following a part of our uh, athletic world and I've noticed that the National Basketball Association has been in collaboration with the Disney organization in order to have uh, some type of season for the 2020-2021 basketball season. And so what they have done is they have collaborated together to create a safe place uh, they're really referring to it as the NBA bubble uh, in Orlando, Florida, where the Disney organization is designating three hotels that they would literally create as a safe place for players and coaches and uh, uh, athletic directors and the medical staff and, and the referees to be housed in a safe place uh, they would play in one of the stadiums that's owned by uh, the Disney Corporation there in Orlando, Florida. And the hope is that they w that everyone inside of that bubble, inside of that safe place, uh, would never contract uh, COVID-19 or the coronavirus. However, in planning this bubble, the planners have even allowed for uh, the possibility of a player, of a coach, of a referee, or one of the personnel uh, that's a part of uh, that big production to contract the COVID-19 coronavirus, even inside of the bubble. But I just love to tell you today that thanks be to God, God is our refuge. God is our shelter. God is our safety place. Not Disney, not Orlando, but the text says God is our refuge. He's our shelter. He's our hiding place. He's our safety zone. God is our high tower. It is God that builds a hedge of protection around us. It is God that creates the sheep 
fold and he protects us from everything that's around us because God is our refuge. He is our shelter. And so I'm encouraging every listener, every viewer, you need to understand that it is important that we shelter not just in place, that we shelter not just in our homes, but that we shelter in God. God is our refuge. God is our refuge. And then the text says that not only is God our refuge, but God is our strength. He is our might. He is our ability. Listen, when our strength runs out, God is our strength. And even when we quote the text that the you shall fake fail and faint and young men shall utterly fall but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength listen even when he renews our strength and our strength runs out God himself is our strength and listen you can depend on the strength of God when all of your strength is gone amen he is our strength and then God is a very present help in trouble. Listen, this Hebrew phrase, phrase, very present help has to do with uh, the quickness of the help of God, that he is very present. He comes quicker than right now, sooner than at once. In terms of first responders, listen, if you call the fire department, if you call uh, for an ambulance, they have what is called a response time. And there is time between uh, the time you call 911 and the time that the ambulance or the fire truck arrives. That has to do with response time. But thanks be to God, he is a very present help. And that talks about the quickness of his ability to show up where you are. As a matter of fact, while you're asking, he's already answering your prayer. While, while you're speaking, he's already uh, lifting your burden. While you're thinking about the pain and the trouble, he's already calming it and easing it and solving it because he can do it quickly. Not only does this very present help speak of the quickness of God's help, but it speaks of the completeness of God's help. Sometimes when you call the fire department, they have to call for backup. They, they, there's a thing called a, a first alarm, a second alarm, a third alarm fire where they call for additional help. But listen, when God shows up, his help is already complete. He doesn't have to call for some more help. He doesn't have to call for some more angels. He don't have to call for any more church members. God can help you all by himself. As a matter of fact, when you have him, you don't need any one else. Amen. He is a very present help. This speaks of uh, his quickness. This speaks of uh, the completeness of his help. And, and this speaks of uh, the might of his help. That when he shows up, he has all the might, all the ability, all the capacity to do whatever is needed to answer your question, lift your burden, solve your problem, mend your brokenness, heal your sickness. Amen. Meet your needs even to the point of overflow. Now and to him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we can ask or think. God is our refuge. God is our strength. God is a very present help in the time of trouble. Amen. And so the psalmist said, because we're sheltered in God, and because he comes quickly and he comes completely and he comes with the capacity of the omniscient, omnipotent uh, power of heaven and glory that resides in himself, the psalmist says, therefore, we will not fear. We will not fear because we are sheltered in God. We don't have to be afraid because we are sheltered in God. We don't have to be terrorized by what's going on around us because we are sheltered in God. God. Amen. We will not fear. And then and then he talks about he talks about the prevailing conditions. He said he says the psalmist says though the earth be removed and though the mountains be cast into the sea and 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 what he's talking about is even though there are 
earth shaking events that are happening around us, even though uh, we're seeing things that we've never seen before. I mean, anytime you have a world leader uh, that says drink bleach, listen, that's an earth shaking statement. Anytime uh, you have a, a, a policeman put his knee on a man's neck until he cannot breathe. Those are things uh, that we're seeing that we've they've been happening but we've never seen it before. Amen. But 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 even though these things are happening, we will not fear because we are sheltered in God. Is there anybody over here sheltered in God? Is it anybody over here sheltered in God? Come on, give me a thumb up. Come on, come on, give me a like. I'm sheltered in God. I'm safe in his arms. He's my refuge. He's my hiding place. He's my fortress. He's my high tower. He's the head hedge of protection all around me. And we will not fear. Then the psalmist says, though, uh, uh, though the, the waters roar and the mountains shake under the pressure of the swelling tides. And, and really, the psalmist, the psalmist is really describing a tsunami. He's really describing a tsunami uh, because the earthquake caused a tsunami. And listen, tsunamis come in waves. Tsunamis come in waves. And this, this is our current condition because the first wave wave we experienced was COVID-19. Then the second wave we experienced uh, was uh, police brutality. And both of these waves are still flowing. And then the third wave was the looting and the burning of our cities and, and our inner cities. Then the fourth wave have been the violence and the crime, especially in Chicago, where over the last few days, a one-year-old was shot, a three-year-old was shot. People just driving around in cars, firing weapons out of the window indiscriminately. And, and it's, it's just a shame. But because we are sheltered in God, we will not fear because we are sheltered in God. God is our refuge. God is our strength. God is our very present help in trouble. He comes quickly. He comes completely. He comes with great might and capacity to handle whatever problem that we have. Now, the psalmist says, in the midst of all of this, in the midst of all of this, the psalmist says, there is a river. <laughs> he says, there is a river. There is a river. There is a river. There is a river. The streams thereof make glad the city of God, the holy place. There is a river. And this river, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen, is really God's river of love that flows among us. And he talks about the streams thereof or the, the tributaries to this river. And the tributaries of God's river of love are these. One tributary is grace. Another tributary is mercy. Another tributary is peace. And another tributary is joy. And listen, when God has his river of love flowing in our midst that contains grace and mercy and peace and joy, it makes us happy as we are sheltered in him despite all of this chaos that's going on around us. We will not fear. We will not be afraid. Afraid, we will not be terrorized because we are sheltered in God. We're in that, that calm, tranquil place called the eye of the storm. Amen. Where whirlwinds are all around us, but we have peace in the eye of the storm. Listen, this river makes the inhabitants of the city of God, and this city of God is a reference to Jerusalem, the holy place, uh, the place of the tabernacle of the Most High God. Now, I find, my brothers and sisters, I find in this a great mystery. Listen, because the mystery is this. We're sheltered in God, and yet God is dwelling among us. 
We're sheltered in God, and yet God is dwelling among us. That's a mystery. I cannot explain it, but I tell you what, it surely makes me glad to know that I am in him, and then he is with me. We are in him, and he is among us us and and listen and even though uh the heathens rage and and the kingdoms uh, are moved and, and and that simply means even though wicked people uh, launch their uh, evil devices and even though the kingdoms of this world come against uh, our lord and his christ all god has to do is speak a word the bible says he uttered his voice he uttered his voice and the earth melted listen all god has to do is say a word and your enemies will melt away. All God has to do is say a word and your troubles will melt away. All God has to do is say a word and your problems will melt away. All God has to do is speak one word and I mean to tell you everything that's been bothering you will melt away. <laughs> Amen. God is our refuge. Shelter in him. Live in him. Dwell in him. Stay in him. He's our safety zone. He's our high tower. Amen. He's our hiding place. He's our place of freedom from trouble, strife, pain, and problems, and predicaments. Finally, verse number seven, the psalmist says, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. The Lord of hosts, the Lord of hosts. He's the king of glory, the Lord of hosts. He's the Lord of that heavenly host, that mighty angelic army. The Lord of hosts is with us. Listen, he's with us in front of us. He's with us behind us. He's with us on the right. He's with us on the left. He's above us. He's beneath us. We are enveloped in him and just like the NBA is trying to have a bubble in Orlando listen we have a real bubble we have a real safe place we have a place where the enemy cannot penetrate no weapon formed against us shall prosper with the head and not the tail with the lender and not the borrower we have joy and not sorrow we have peace and not confusion we have power and not weakness because God is with us. Can you say God is with me? Can you say God is with me? Can you say God is with me? And it's, just, and it's not just any God. It is the God of Jacob. The, amen. It is the God that delivered Jacob. It's the same God that protected Jacob. That's almost, that's almost like saying it's the God of our forefathers that brought them. It's the God of our forefathers that kept them through the middle passage. It's the God of our foreparents that he allowed to endure slavery and Jim Crow. It's the God of our forefathers that went through ah, the, the days of segregation and separation and, and the Knight Riders and the Ku Klux Klan. It's the same God that kept them. It's the same God that will keep us and it's the same God that will strengthen us and it's the same God that will walk with us. It's the same God that will talk with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. God is with us. God is our refuge. God is on our side. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. He walks with me. He talks with me. He holds my hand. He guides my feet. He protects me from hurt, harm, and danger. Somebody shout hallelujah. Hallelujah. The God of Jacob is our refuge. I pray that you were blessed and encouraged to be reminded that God is our strength. He's our refuge. He is our present help in the time of trouble. Listen, you should get saved if you're not. And if you've got questions about salvation, I want to encourage you to call our church right now. 773-873-4433. Someone is here until 12 noon. If you've got questions and you want to accept the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Right now, we are preparing to go into communion. It is our act where we um, honor the sacrifice that Jesus has made for us. And so I pray that you've got your crackers, your bread, your wine, your juice ready to participate in communion led by our pastor. Good morning. We find ourselves again gathered at the communion table. It is my prayer that you have assembled your elements to participate 
in this communion observance. The hymnologist says, I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood. I know it was the blood for me. One day Jesus died on Calvary. I know it was the blood for me. As I thought about the significance of the death of Jesus, I thought about the original pandemic. The original pandemic, the original problem uh, in humanity is sin. But unlike the, co the COVID-19 uh, virus and coronavirus that has no cure, no vaccine, no antidote, thanks be to God, the sin problem has a cure. And the cure of the sin problem is the blood of Jesus. There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. Sinners plunge beneath that flood and lose all their guilty stains. Not only does the sin problem have a cure, but it also has a vaccine. And the vaccine for the sin problem is the word of God. David says, thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against God. And then the sin problem also has an antidote. And the antidote to our sin problem is prayer. For the Bible says that if we would confess our sins, that God is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And we owe it all to him who is the Son of God, the Lamb of God, the Savior of the world, Jesus Christ. And we come now to recognize uh, that death he died on the hill called Calvary. The Bible says that as they were eating, Jesus took bread and he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and commanded them to eat. He says, this is my body, which is broken for you. And afterward, he took the cup and when he had given thanks, he commanded them to drink. Of the cup, he said, this is the blood of the new covenant shed for the remission of sin. Thank God there is a cure for our sin problem. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank and praise you for your awesome love and that great expression of grace and mercy on the offering of your Son, Jesus, our Savior, for our sins. God, he died for our sins, but he arose for our justification. We ask now, Father, that in every home where bread is being broken, in every home where cups of, of your blood is being raised, that you would bless it and sanctify it and purify the hearts of those that would participate. God, we pray for forgiveness of our sins. We ask you to inspect us. If you find anything that should not be, take it out. Then God, bless this bread, bless this wine. And as we take it, let us do as Jesus commanded, this do in remembrance of me. We pray in Jesus' name and for his sake, amen. Jesus says, this is my body. As we think about him with our minds focused at Calvary, he says, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat. This is the blood of the new covenant shed for the remission of sin. Drink ye all of it. Amen. God bless you. Go in peace. Go with God. Stay safe. Thank you so much for sharing in communion with us. And I want to take this opportunity to thank you all who've been faithful and generous in your giving and support of this ministry. Your giving has allowed us to continue to go forward in ministry, even during these times. You can give here at Antioch a few different ways. You can give on our website, ambcchicago.org. Click on the giving tab. You can also give on the Givelify app. Search for Antioch Missionary Baptist Church. You can also mail or drop off your donations to Antioch Missionary Baptist Church, 415 West Englewood, Chicago, Illinois, 60621, or call the church number at 773-873-4433, and you can make arrangements for your gifts to be received from your home. We thank you so much for partnering and connecting with us. This is your digital pastor, Terrell Carter. We're going to see you right here next week on another edition of Antioch Live.
Thank you for joining Antioch Live. We appreciate our faithful listeners for your support and donations for nearly 60 years. Tell your family, tell your friends. Join us every Sunday at 8 o'clock a.m. Until then, may God bless all of you real, real good.